Hey there, on this fine cool morning, I wanna show you the easiest garden you'll ever grow, a weed garden. Okay, so why would you wanna grow a weed garden, right? Growing a weed garden is not as insane as it might sound at first. Whether you're looking for herbal medicines, very highly nutritious wild foraging type of foods, or if you just want to confuse your neighbors, a weed garden has something for you. They're also foolproof. It, you, you cannot fail this garden. I, would, I could set this on fire and it would just delay things. It wouldn't even stop it because, because they're weeds. So how do you make a weed garden? Uh, the same way that you would make any other garden, just prepare the soil. Um, whether that's if it's double digging or if it's tilling or whatever you like to do in your garden, just do that, but then don't spread any seeds down. Don't mulch it. You don't, you don't have to water it. You don't have to do anything. The weed seeds are already there and they're gonna take care of themselves just like they would in your other gardens and they will pop up all on their own. This area was choked out with grass. This, this is an old experiment garden uh, that I threw together one year and I, I let the grass take it over. And so first I had to get rid of that because grass can outcompete a lot of your weeds. But uh, as I was going through, I also found this goji berry that was that was setting down roots. And so it was so it was so tenacious to make it through that grass and to uh, to survive out here. I just didn't have the heart to pull it up and move it. It, it staked its claim, and I'm going to honor that. But other than that, I've taken everything out, and we're just going to wait and see what grows. Obviously nothing is growing yet, but what I want to do is, so we don't have to wait too long, I, I want to show you one of the plants that was already growing in here and talk to you about some of its, its values and its, its good gooderness. Here is some chickweed. Chickweed is a sweet little thing. It's sort of a tender plant, generally associated with cool weather. It can be found in, in every state. It can be found around the world. Um, especially in co cooler areas. It's a cool weather plant and um, it can be found up like in, in Greenland. It likes cold so much. But yeah, e every one of, the, of these United States you can find it and it is an excellent uh, nutritional powerhouse. This thing right here. And it tastes really good too. I think it tastes kind of like a snap pea. Um, other people will say like corn silk or um, like lettuce. You know, to each his own. Uh, I gotta eat it. It's just, it's really yummy. I have to. I'm having a hard time. We may have to move to a new location if I eat this one. Why is it called chickweed? <laughs> Mystery solved. Okay, let's get serious now. Let's identify this thing. Here's how you can identify chickweed. This is, a, this is another, another reason this makes a great first plant for us to talk about because if you follow this, these identification you know, steps, you're not gonna get the wrong plant. You're definitely gonna get chickweed and you, you definitely know you, you have a safe plant and a tasty one. So, okay, it's, it's generally low growing. Now it, it, it'll, grow, it'll grow usually in, in like colonies. They, they reseed prolifically and so you will find just tons of them around a lot, a lot of the time and they'll be mixed in with everything else too and they're generally a pretty low plant because their stems they're they're weaker and they can't hold themselves up but if they're mixed in with other plants then they'll you know they'll kind of climb up or, or lay they'll lay on on their neighbors and the stems can get you know over a foot long if they're in really good ground you might get like two feet maybe, maybe more but uh, they're generally pretty small the leaves are opposite. That means that every time leaves come out, they come out on opposite sides in a pair. They're on opposite sides of the stem. And the leaf shape can vary, but let's say more or less of an oval. And they'll always have a little, boop, a little point at the, at the tip. And the flower, if they're blooming, the flower has five petals, but it's gonna look like 10 because they're deeply clefted. They're like, like bunny ears. And um, the entire upper portion of the plant is edible sometimes too edible and you can't stop eating it. If you get them when they're young like this, you can eat the whole thing, very tender, very delicious. As they get older, they can be a little stringier and um, you can chop them up real fine to try to make the most of it. Or just eat the top, you know, two or three inches and it's still tender. Okay, now 
for the super duper how to definitely know you have chickweed. This is how we do it. On the stem, there will be a single line of hairs. So just on one side, there's a line of hairs. And after every pair of leaves, the hair, the hair switches over to a different side. And they're, they're small. You may have to hold it up to the light to see them. Or you might want to bring a magnifying glass with you. But that is one excellent identifying factor. I'm just describing common chickweed. There are other types, like um, mouse ear chickweed has hair all over. You know, if you want to know all, all of the different varieties of chickweed, probably, you know, get yourself a good plant identification book or uh, talk to a, a local expert. We're just, we're doing the, one of the real common ones. And that, uh, that line of hairs is important to uh, differentiate this from one potential poisonous lookalike. But if you have that, that line of hairs that switches after every pair of leaves, you're definitely good. Ow, I bit my tongue. There's, there's another giveaway. This one, it's a little trickier to do it, but it is a just absolute dead giveaway. You kind of bend the stalk back and forth, left and right, and give it a little twist. And then if you're careful, you can pull it apart and there's this inner, this like inner core, like a straw in a straw. And it's a, it's a little bit elastic. Oh, oh, lo oh, look at that. I pulled the whole thing out. Hey, neat. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that, but that was in there and I managed to pull the whole thing out. And that's, um, that's also the part that gets tougher. Nom, 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 nom. Let's take some of this inside and let me show you some of the ways that you can prepare it and eat it. Um, because I am, if I, you can eat it raw, and if we don't go inside and prepare some of this, I'm just gonna eat it all up. Also, I'm getting a cramp in my hip from sitting funny. You know, because this plant does like to grow around other plants so much, when you're picking it, make sure that you get the plant that you, you think you're getting. Now, these, everything in here is edible, but, uh, you know, not everything in the world is. So, so watch, watch what you're getting. It's also a, a weather forecasting plant. The flower will close up at night, but also before it rains, it'll close up. So it's a good, it's a good weather forecaster. And uh, this plant also, it, it really likes moist areas too. Of course, it, it doesn't read the plant books, so sometimes sometimes it doesn't know where it's supposed to be. But you can find it in your yard, in your garden, in your herb garden, um, at the edges of paths, places like that, places places like that. And it also has a lot of good medicinal properties. It's very cooling. You can just if you have a rash or a burn or something. If you can keep yourself from just eating it and swallowing it, which actually that's another good way. Just eat a bunch of it, and it's still cooling. But, chew up the you ready for this you ready put that right on the on the spot and then you could you know put a bandage over there or a band-aid or something and that'll help take the inflammation out and draw it right out chickweed is an amazingly versatile plant when it comes to cooking now as previously mentioned you can eat it raw you can possibly not stop eating it raw because it's delicious but also you've got a lot of more um, formal, official uh, ways of eating it. Most obviously is to toss it into salad. It works great in a salad, and I'm gonna skip over that one because it's, it's so obvious. Just take some, make your salad, put it in the salad, and you're good to go. One of the more obvious options for most edible greens is to toss them into a stew or a soup. With chickweed, you wanna put it in around the last five minutes or so so it doesn't overcook, but it is an excellent addition to stew. I didn't get any in that bite. And the less you cook it, the more it adds a nice crisp texture, a nice snap. I'm not done. Mm. One of my personal favorite ways to include greens is in weed pizza. Mm, this is a good project. Just make yourself a pizza of whatever size you want. Add them on as the toppings. A little Parmesan cheese and red pepper flakes. Mmm. I love a wild and weedy pizza. So pizzas are one option that works with a lot of wild plants. There's a lot of stuff you can put on a pizza because it's pizza. But I, d I don't usually read about this in the, say, foraging books or web pages. But this is definitely one you need to you need to keep in your metaphorical back pocket when trying out new wild foods. Try it on a pizza. Do yourself a favor. Try it on a pizza. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, my third suggestion for chickweed is a fairly new one to me, but it is my absolute favorite. This is so good. They're like these chickweed fritters, sort of. Here's how you do this, okay? Get some flour, put in some salt and some pepper, mix that together. Now, rinse off your chickweed, give it a little bit of a shake, and put that in a bowl. Then put that in a bigger bowl, because your first bowl was too small. Pour the flour over the chickweed and kind of toss it around. If you need more moisture, give it a spritz with a water bottle. If you need more flour, just make some more flour and put it in. Then heat up some oil. I like coconut oil, but hey, you do whichever one you like. Form the chickweed doughy concoction into sort of a, a lump or a patty. Put it in the oil. You can press it down to help it kind of hold together. Then uh, after it's cooked a bit, you can check under and see if it's starting to brown or if it's starting to burn and flip it over. Then uh, pull it out, and I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see in the picture, but the it takes on almost almost like a emerald glass-like or, or gem-like um, uh, coloration. Here, this is mm. ah, it floated. <laughs> it blew up on me. Oh, they're so good. If your family doesn't like this, there's something wrong with them. Bless their hearts. But this is good. Especially fresh off of... I've, I had to set up to film this and they're getting a little cool. They're still wonderful, but right out of there when they're hot. Oh, they're so good. And this this is also... They're great to dip in things. Like a honey mustard sauce or barbecue. Again, whichever one you like. Oh! This is like fair food. It's so crunchy. I can't go on with the video. I'm, I'm stuck eating these. Okay, let me finish up this chickweed feast, and then we'll talk about some of the medicinal properties and uses of chickweed. Chickweed has quite a few medicinal properties, but mainly, if you want to sum it all up, it's cooling and it's soothing. It's great for when you need to tell part of your body, hey, chill out. It's going to be okay. Like, say you have a rash, a sunburn, a, a burn burn, a sting, something like that. Like I showed you outside, you can just chew it and slap it on. But if you want something a little more professional looking, you can take the chickweed, pop it in a blender, add a little bit of water, let that spin all up, and then uh, you can just pour that into a rag and, and soak the rag and put that on the uh, the irritated area. You can you can drink it pulp and all. Well, you don't have to blend it. You can just eat the stuff and it it works its way through your body. Or you can strain it and uh, uh, strain it through some cheesecloth and squeeze all the juice out and uh, you can drink it. I know it sounds weird to think about blending up and drinking peas, because I, I think of it as, as a, like a snap pea flavor. But it, it's good, uh, and you can add a little bit of lemon juice and sugar to it. <laughs> Zingy. That is, a, that is an unusual but pleasant lemonade flavor. I think that about wraps up this uh, this friendly little look at a friendly little plant, chickweed. I'll come back next time and we can see what's popping up in the weed garden.